nobody is drawing your interest to share or something. Anyway, I mean, um, so once again, I greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, this is a wonderful day of uh, worship and we are sitting in the presence of God. Amen. So we had a wonderful, I mean, Thanksgiving meeting of uh, dear uh, Sister Divya yesterday and it was amazing and uh, God blessed us together this evening and in yesterday evening and uh, today we are coming to worship the Lord. And uh, once again, um, happy wedding anniversary dear Joshan and Sister Kalmian uh, Ajaya. Uh, may God bless you. We are praying for you. And, uh, uh, you know, we have a prayer request also. Uh, there is there is an uncle and auntie, uh, Rajan uncle and uh, Elsie Andy. So that uncle is uh, admitted in the uh, Kaiser Hospital. Um, it was, uh, you know, through uh, Reggie brother, we got uh, the information about that family. They are living in Elkro and uh, uh, they contacted uh, our dear Reggie brother and family and uh, we spoke to them and we, yesterday we went to uh, meet them uh, to the hospital and that uncle is admitted in the hospital. Actually, uh, he is having some heart problem and uh, some other I mean, health issues. So we have to pray for that angle. Uh, today, uh, that angle is going to be uh, taken to the Dignity Hospital for the surgery. Surgery is tomorrow and we have to pray for that angle. And uh, that whole family is shifted from uh, uh, Seattle uh, to Sacramento. So we have to pray for them and uh, they are planning and they may be, I mean, uh, if God willing, they will be attending at our church in the coming days. I mean, so we have to pray for the family and God may uh, heal the tangle very, 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 very clearly and uh, I mean, let them also be useful in the hands of God. And let us bring everything in the mighty hand of God and uh, uh, one moment, let us look unto the Lord in prayer and we will uh, share the word of God. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you the, for this beautiful morning time that you have given to us, of God, to come to your presence, of God. This morning, Lord, help us to be constant, consecrated in the presence of God. Help us to be concentrated in the presence of God so that we will receive the word of God this morning. Father, we believe that you are the Lord who is able to speak to us of God. Kathave, Nyangalod Sam Sahari Kiwa, Angi Kisadi Kibanda, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangalod Sam Sahari Kiwa, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. Hallelujah. In the one Kathave, Nyangal Purna Mai to be Shusikin. We bring everything in the mighty hand of God. Thank you for hearing a prayer of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we have many, I mean, uh, I mean, couple of announcements also. Maybe after the message. So we will have to give for the time for that also. But uh, this is the time to listen to the word of God this morning. Let us all concentrate ourselves in the mighty hand of God so that God may speak to us. Amen. So uh, today's title is going to be how to be useful, how to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. How to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. Uh, and I'm taking uh, Acts chapter 10 uh, for the text. Okay. So Acts chapter 10. When you read Acts chapter 10, it speaks about how can God use a person for the kingdom of God and how can God use a person fruitfully for propagating the gospel towards the world. Amen. Logat in the Bunbage, an increase of the Urbekti, I to Maran, David, then Engene Urbekti, Ubiwik and Sadikim, A2, Uboga Pratamaya, Urubesalite, Uri Instrument Night, Engene David, then Urbekti, Ubiwik and Karim. So we are going to look into the lives of Cornelius and also Peter. Okay, so when you read the chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 10, you will understand that there are mainly two persons that is, Cornelius and the Peter. Okay, so we will be discussing many things about uh, Cornelius. I am not sure that I'll be able to make sure that uh, this, I mean, the message is completed today. If not, I'll be completing this message maybe in the next week. So, this morning, let us uh, sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude and we are going to read. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. Somebody can read that verse. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as an Italian cohort. A devout man who feared God with all his household, gave, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in the vision of an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. 
you stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have descended as a memorial before God. And now send send men to Joppa and bring one Simon and, and bring one Simon who is called Peter. Thank you, Elsa. So as we read this portion, you know, I was uh, uh, just uh, meditating this portion in the in the previous day, and I was thinking. You know, uh, about every person of our church, God has a particular plan and purpose. And so we have to identify, I mean, why God called me. Okay? So I just wanted to know for what God has called me. Okay, so that's the reason I was uh, thinking of uh, speaking something about uh, Cornelius and Peter. So when when we when you when you think about these things that we understand this portion, especially chapter ten of book of Acts, tells us very clearly about two different characters from different backgrounds. Okay, Cornelius and Peter, and they were from different backgrounds, but God was able to use them for the kingdom of God. When God is not looking for a person from which background you are, but God is looking for a person who is dedicated in the hands of God. I mean, if a person, if a believer is dedicated in the hands of God, if a person is surrendering his life in the presence of God, and if a person is willing to do something for the name of the Lord, and God is there to use you. Hallelujah. So that is what we understand from the life of Cornelius and Peter. God was using them mightily because they were devoted in the hands of God and they were praying in the presence of God so that God was thinking, okay, I can use these people for the kingdom of God. Especially those people, Cornelius and Peter, they were from different backgrounds, but God was using those people for the kingdom of God. You know, both of them had many similarities also. Both of them had many similarities in their attitude and their character, in their behavior, and in their spiritual desire. You know, we have to have that unity in our Christian life also when we gather together for worshiping God. You know, this is a church, this is a Christian church. I was, I mean, talking to the uh, other people, those who came for the adult class this morning, that, uh, I mean, I was just saying that, okay, I mean, this is, is a church. What is the meaning of the church? The Greek word is ecclesia. What is the meaning of that? It's a congregation. It's a fellowship. It's, 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 a, it's a gathering of a people. Like-minded people. Especially, you can say that. We are the church. And we are the people separated from the world. And with the purpose to worship God. We are consecrated from the, from the world. Okay? We are sanctified from the world and we are separated and you and me are the instrument of God in the hands of God. God will open the way for you and me when you pray in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So that's what we understand from this poem that they were having a separate or, or, or similar attitude, similar behavior, similar spiritual desire in their life to do something for the Lord. We you know both of them were used by God as an instrument in the hands of God in different capacities. You know, every one of us, God has given the different capacities for every one of us. Okay, every person, those who are attending in this worship service, you have a capacity to, to, be, to be useful for the name of the Lord. I mean, that may be differing from the other people. Okay, the, the, the same may not be, I mean, having the, the other, uh, other person also. But you have a different capacity to, to, to be glorified in the name of the Lord and to be, I mean, I mean, useful in the presence of God. So here, we are trying to understand how could we be useful in the presence of God. Especially in chapter 10, we see the vision of Cornelius and Peter. Okay, so when you, when you go to the, I mean, first portion of chapter 10, you can see the vision of Cornelius. And the second portion, maybe from verses 9 following, you can see the, 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 the vision of, uh, I mean, Peter. So Cornelius, according to the vision, 
you, you can you can see the I mean what is the incident which is happening there and I'll be I mean trying to I mean finish that I mean maybe one point uh, uh, today uh, for today's message so listen there Cornelius, according to the vision, sending two servants and a God-fearing soldier to Joppa to meet Peter. Okay, so here Cornelius was praying in the presence of God, and when he was praying, he received a vision from the Lord, and you have to go to or you have to meet with Peter, the servant of God, and then Cornelius was sending two people and two servants and also one God-fearing soldier to Joppa to meet and visit Peter. So here, let me tell you one thing. In a Cornelius was a person who was devoted in the presence of God. The Yathana Sanadil, God fearing Aita, the Yathana Piper to Guna Jeevicha, or Vekti Aita, the Cornelius. So he was seeking for a servant and for a soldier in his regiment who is God fearing. Amen. The people, those who are God fearing, the people, those who are praying in the presence of God, the people, those who are devoted in the sight of God, those people will be always searching the God fearing people. They will be searching for a God fearing people. They will be searching a prayerful person. Hallelujah. And we see that, I mean, he is sending those people to Joppa to meet Peter. And these people reached Joppa the next day at the same time. Peter also was praying there. Listen, these people, these soldiers, and these, I mean, I mean, servants of Cornelius, they, I mean, they left to, I mean, Joppa, and they went to Joppa to meet Peter. Then, when they reached there, they are seeing that Peter also is praying there. Cornelius was first were praying here, and when he was praying, he received the vision. I mean, and then, when these people reached in Joppa, they are seeing that Peter also is praying in Joppa. And these people, when they reach there, you understand that? I mean, Cornelius was giving, I mean, sending these people with a vision. At the same time, Peter was receiving another vision in Joppa. So, the, you know, you may be feeling that this is a, this is a, I mean, the, the, the incident which is uh, maybe, maybe coincidence. Okay, so why it is happening? Because when, when God is calling a person, when God has a desire about one person, and when God has a purpose about one person, and God will arise the things in that manner. When sometimes we are not aware about what is going to happen. When we do not know what is going to happen, but God knows everything. God was knowing Cornelius and God was knowing Peter and he was saying that, okay, I am going to use Cornelius and Peter for the kingdom of God because I know them. I know the heart of the people. Hallelujah. So that's what we understand here. And God is saying that, okay, I mean, I know Cornelius, I know Peter and something which is happening, coincident, will be the will of God. Sometimes we will be able to understand what is the will of God. But you remember one thing, you know, you may be having many incidents in your life also. You know, at the same time, something happening in, in, the, in, the, in the next place. Maybe. Okay. So the same thing. So. For, for example, I have many incidents, you know, when I, I, I was, uh, uh, as I'm in the ministry, you know, sometimes when I am experienced something, you know, the same time, the other person in somewhere, somewhere, maybe, maybe uh, somewhere, maybe in, the, in the, the other continent or other country, some people will be experiencing the same thing there. You know, this is the doing of God. We will not understand what is the depth of that experience. But God is going to do the miracles in the people of God when they are praying in the presence of God. Here we understand, Peter was praying, Cornelius prayed, he received a vision from the Lord, and Peter was praying, and he also received a vision from the Lord. Can you read uh, verses 17 to 20? Verses 17 to 20 of chapter 10. Yeah. Now while Peter wondered within himself for this vision which he had seen men, behold, the man who had been sent from Cornelius mm. had made inquiry for Simon's house mm. and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. Mm. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise therefore, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. You know, yeah, and thank you, thank you. So when we read this portion, we understand when 
when Cornelius was sending these people to the house of uh, uh, Simon to meet Peter, we understand that that person also was praying. Okay, and he received a vision, but he was not knowing what is the meaning of that vision. Listen very carefully. Peter was not knowing what is the meaning of this vision. I'm not, I mean, going to explain all the, I mean, uh, the vision and everything, but I, you know the, the vision what they, uh, he was watching. Anyway, you know, but he was confused. Peter was confused and he was, I mean, just thinking, oh, what is the meaning of this vision? I don't know. I'm still, I mean, seeing something different and I don't know what is the meaning of this. And then when you read uh, uh, the, the following verses, maybe uh, 44, um, through 46, uh, I mean, you will understand that they, after, you know, they, he, he started to preach, you know, they met together and after that, he started to preach. Okay, Cornelius also, I mean, met Peter and Peter started to make a message there. He was, he was, I mean, delivering a sermon there and he started to preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ and the repentance and all those things. I mean, after the preaching, after the sermon, we read in uh, uh, maybe verses 44 to 46 that those people were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Can you read that verse? 44, 45 and 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Mm. And those of the circumcision who <clears throat> believed were as astonished. Mm. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of Holy Spirit has been poured out onto Gentiles also. Man, for for they you, heard that, them that, speak with tongues that, and that, magnify yeah, God. You know, it says it, that, you know, when they were listening the word of God, when they were listening the sermon, the Holy Spirit came upon them. It could happen in our life also. Hallelujah. It could happen in our life also. Amen. The people, those who are sitting in the presence of God, if you are eagerly waiting to listen the word of God, I mean, the word of God says that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will, I mean, speak the other tongue. Hallelujah. So, in the, in the earlier church, you know, we understand when the people of God, when the servants of God were speaking the word of God, they were listening the word of God and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. You know, and they started to speak in other tongues. Amen. And your partial in our Samsari can Tonagi. And your partial is Samsari can Tonagi, Paul. So Peter was saying that again, this is the right time that you are going to be baptized. Hallelujah. And when we read the following verses, we understand when God, okay, the, the part, Peter was insisting that, and you have to take baptism. You have to repent about your sins. You have to take. Baptism. I mean, listen very carefully. When we pray in the presence of God, God will give you some vision and God will do something. You know why? I mean, Peter was preaching uh, to, the, to the people, those who gathered there. Because he had something in his heart that again, I mean, I have to, I mean, give something for these people, those who were waiting for me. A lot of people were waiting for Peter. And Peter was saying, I'm going to preach about Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached among the people, there is the work of the Holy Spirit. There is the work of the Holy Spirit. And I believe and I pray that I mean, let the Holy Spirit work among the people of ELC Church in these coming days. Hallelujah. And when the, when the Holy Spirit is working among the people of God, there will be miracles. Hallelujah. When the people of God, I mean, are filled with the Holy Spirit and when they are speaking in other tongues, I mean, many things will happen. Many things will happen if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and if you have the gift of the, I mean, other tongue and you have to speak that. Sometimes, you know, we insist to do that. I mean, even though we have received the Holy Spirit, we have the other thing speaking, we have the gift and we are not, we are shy to speak that word. Right? We are shy to speak the other ten in front of the other people but I don't shy for that personally let me tell you I don't shy to speak the other ten in front of the people because I am confirmed I have the conviction that I received it from the Lord hallelujah. Amen. Amen hallelujah hallelujah and that should be the worship in the spirit praise God and we understand that when Peter was speaking the word of God to those people those who gathered there, I mean, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they took baptism. Again, this
this is the incident which is described in chapter 10. Uh, but but I mean we will we will think about what we understand from this incident incident and what made God to work through these people. I mean, why God was working through these people and why God was using these people, you have to understand one thing. The first point which I want to share with you is both of them were connected with God in prayer. I think. Both of them were connected with God in prayer. That's the important thing. Okay? I know that only one point will be covered by this message. But I know that the Lord is speaking to the people this morning. Hallelujah. If the Lord is speaking to you this morning, lift your hands and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You read once again that I mean, maybe verses 1 through 4. Once again. Once again. A devout man who feared God with all his household gave alms generously to people and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God came come, come in and said to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send a man, man to Joppa and bring one Simon who was called Peter. Thank you. You know, what is that? You know, both of them, Cornelius and Peter, they were connected with God in prayer. So, what is prayer? Prathana and Dana. They were told connected so when we pray we are I mean, constantly I mean, connected with God and we are receiving the vision from the Lord Amen sometimes when we pray in the presence of God you will receive a vision you will receive a special thought from the Lord and you will receive the word from the Lord maybe the Bible will speak to you when you pray Amen? we understand Cornelius also was praying and Peter also was praying and they received a vision from the Lord and that says that how I am going to use you for the kingdom of God. Amen. Especially when you think about uh, uh, even read uh, 9 also, verse 9 also. Yeah. The next day as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to the housetop about the sixth hour. Peter went up to the upstairs and uh, to pray. So Peter also was praying. Listen, so these two people, when they were praying, they were receiving something. That means, especially when you study about Cornelius, he was a centurion of Italian regiment or battalion. Okay, he was a centurion. Okay, he was a centurion in the in the Italian regiment. At the same time, you know, centurions were known as the backbone of the Roman army. Let's just think about who he was and how he was useful for the name of the Lord. Okay, any person who is dedicated to the hands of God, God can use them. Okay, here a person who was the backbone of the Roman army and he was a centurion of the Italian regiment uh, or the I mean uh, uh, or the I mean, I mean battalion and he was used for the Lord. You know, the ancient historian describes the qualifications of the centurion like this about, especially about the Cornelius. You can you can see that in the in the screen. I'll read it out. Okay, centurions are desired not to be overbold and reckless so much as good leaders of steady and prudent mind, not prone to take the offensive to start fighting wantonly, but able when overwhelmed and hard pressed to stand fast and die at their post. That means the centurion is must be a person with a loyalty and that must be a person with a courageous heart. You know, whatever happens, whatever is going to happen into the centurion, I mean, he must not be afraid of anything, but he must be courageous for everything. Okay, then Cornelius also was a person who was always, I mean, faithful in the presence of God and he was having the courage in his life and he was always loyalty towards God. That's the reason, even though he was in a good position, in a, in a famous position, in a prominent position, he was praying in the presence of God. Listen very carefully. You may, you may be in a position, no problem. You can pray in the presence of God. Okay, that's what we understand about the centurion, I mean, I mean, Cornelius. 
Cornelius, therefore, was a man who was first and foremost knew that I mean courage and loyalty towards God. You know, and and we read about this person that he was a man of prayer and he was a man of charity and he was a God fearing man. These are the three things which is written in that particular birth. I mean verses. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of charity. And he was a God-fearing man. I was just thinking, how can this person do all these things? Because he was a feminine, I mean, I mean prominent, I mean person, and he was a he was a man, I mean, centurion of the soldier of Italy, Italy. It is not possible for them, but still. That person was decided that I can do something for the Lord. I mean, if I'm praying in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And we have to understand that even though he was a busy man, but he was a God-fearing person and he was praying man. And when we pray, I mean, God is giving, giving his vision I mean, uh, for I mean, Cornelius. So this morning, let me encourage everyone of this, I mean, uh, this church and that, uh, you know, when you pray, you have to take, I mean, find out the time for the prayer. Now sometimes we are busy with many things and we don't have the time to pray and we are I mean, busy with many other things. But remember one thing, if you pray, if you take time, if you spend time in prayer, I mean if you are connected with God always, I mean God can speak to you. Amen. Just like, uh, let me give you one example for that, you know, you can, you know that uh, the radio and the TV. Okay, so there are many things in the in the, in the atmosphere. Okay, there are many airwaves out there. Okay, there are many images in the I mean atmosphere. But when we are connected, when we are connecting the, the cable of the TV with that, then only you are getting those things in your TV, right? Okay, if not connected with those things, you are not getting anything. Okay, when we are connected spiritually with the Lord in prayer, then that connection will help you and that will encourage you and that will strengthen you. That connection with God in prayer will strengthen you in your spiritual life. I mean, that's the same thing, you know, when, I mean, uh, uh, Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, they were in prison. What happened? In uh, maybe Acts chapter 16, we understand that when they were in jail, they were in prison, Paul and Silas, they were just singing songs and they were worshipping God and they were praying in the presence of God. They were chained. They were in bondage. They were in prison. But even then, they were, they were starting to pray in the presence of God. They started to worship the Lord. When uh, I mean, Justin was uh, giving the I mean, introduction for the I mean, service, he was saying that, okay, I mean, the prophet Elisha, okay, uh, he just experienced the presence of God, I mean, which is surrounded, which is surrounded, the servant of God. You know, we have to see that when we worship God, when we pray God, pray to God, I mean, there is a presence of God surrounding you. I mean, now we I mean, Madila in the Kadana, they get the sanity in the Mukatibisa, we are Kagana Mepra. Hallelujah. So here we understand when he was praying in the presence of God and he received the presence of God and the visions I mean, from the I mean, from the Lord and that changed the life of that person. I mean, so even Peter also when he was receiving, when he was praying in the presence of God, he received that vision about Cornelius that which is going to happen. I mean, yeah, I mean uh, that uh, when God was saying that again, it is not possible for you to meet that person, but God is doing, God is going to, I mean, open the way for you. I mean, so this morning, let me, let me encourage you one thing that when we are ready to pray in the presence of God, the miracle will happen. The miracle will happen. Surely the miracle will happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please close your eyes in the presence of God. And let us pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. When a person is dedicated in the presence of God, in the hands of God, when a person is giving himself in the presence of God, I mean, God is willing to use that person for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. 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 If you want to, I mean, listen to the word of God. God. If you want to listen the voice of God and you have to spend time in I mean, connection with God. 
Hallelujah. But we are to stay tuned with God. You are going to receive something. When you are connected with God, you are going to receive something. Hallelujah. This morning, close your eyes and pray for the Lord. I need to get something from the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, take a decision. I'll be praying in the presence of God. And I will be becoming a I mean, God-fearing person. And I will do some, I'll be doing some charitable work. At the same time, I must be a God-fearing person. I must be a prayerful person. Hallelujah. When we are a prayerful person, and God will speak to us. And God will give his vision to you. And God has something to deliver to you that God is going to use you mightily in the coming days. Hallelujah. So that's what we understand from the life of Cornelius and Peter. I mean, God was abandoned. They were praying. God, they received a vision and God used them for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all submit us in the mighty hand of God this morning and let's pray that, oh Lord, I need to be a, a God-fearing person. I need to be a prayerful person in the sight of God. Oh Lord, I mean, use me, oh God. Use me, oh God, in different capacities, oh God, for uh, for bringing the people into the church of God in the coming days, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe that. I mean, I mean, God is going to use, I mean, every person, every family of this church to, uh, to bring many Many people into the presence of God, into the church in the coming days. Hallelujah. God will use you. I mean, God will use you. I mean, in the coming days to bring many people to the church. I mean, to serve the Lord, to worship the Lord in the coming days. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you have to be surrendered in the hands of God. If you're ready for that, God is going to use you. Hallelujah. Let us pray together and uh, let us submit us with the mighty hand of God according to the word of God. I request uh, uh, dear brother, uh, Reggie brother to lead us in prayer now. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah.